Hi everyone, welcome again to Bake Your Way Kitchen. Today I'm doing a kind of an Easter special, or I really should say holiday special episode. We are going to be making peanut bonbons. And they're just peanut butter balls uh, with, the, with Rice Krispie in them. And they're dipped in chocolate. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Now I usually do this around Easter, or not Easter, Christmas. I roll them into, roll the peanut butter into balls, dip them, and then keep them in the freezer. And they're they're one of my favorite desserts. They're so good, but you can easily do that. You can easily change this recipe up. Like what I'm going to be, I'm doing this for Easter, so I'm going to uh, roll the peanut butter um, mixture into little eggs, which you'll see. But you can make it in any size, any shape you want. And the ingredients are super simple and easy. There's only four ingredients in this. There's peanut butter, powdered sugar, unsalted butter, and um, Rice Krispies or rice cereal. Uh, now this is a classic family recipe that's been passed down or quite a while. This is a very old magazine and this is actually where this recipe is originally from. It's from, uh, I don't even know, I, Beautiful Holiday Ideas. I don't know if that was the magazine or just an insert in a magazine. But it's been a recipe that, that uh, my mom has used a lot and it's super easy. Uh, all that's required, you need two cups of peanut butter. Um, which is a 480 grams and uh, I just weighed my peanut butter. I do not bother to try to put it in measuring cups. It's too messy. I strongly recommend getting a scale, put it on. One cup of peanut butter is 240 grams. We need two cups here so 480 grams. And what I've done is I've put it over a saucepan of simmering water. Um, well the water's not simmered yet. I'm going to bring it to the stove. Uh, because we need to melt it with the butter. But before I get to the butter, I just want to say something about peanut butter. If you're like me, I, I, I am all on board. I love raw peanut butter. I absolutely love raw peanut butter. I make it myself. I just take, take, roast, take uh, some nuts, put it in a food processor and make my own. Or sometimes I get store-bought raw peanut butter. But this is not the time to use that. You need to use the craft stuff and I hate to say it but yeah I got this <laughs> um, I rarely 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 ever get this kind of peanut butter because I don't like the additives but the reason why you need to use a store-bought regular peanut butter rather than the natural raw peanut butter is because um, in the in the store-bought peanut butter they have stabilizers in the peanut butter if you use a raw peanut butter there is risk of the oil separating. So anytime I do peanut butter in baking, when I'm involving peanut butter, I just go out and buy the store-bought stuff because you just don't want to risk your product becoming ruined because your peanut butter's falling apart. So that's a little end of my little rant thing. And to this we're going to add half a cup, 113 grams of unsalted butter. And it really should be unsalted because you know what, the peanuts provide kind of a salty flavor as it is. If your peanut butter doesn't have any salt and you really want salt, you can add a pinch of salt in this, um, in, at this time. So I've got my peanut butter and butter here. I'm going to put it over a saucepan, bring it to the stove and let this melt. And you just, just put the stove on about low to medium low heat uh, until it's all melted and combined and I'll show you the next step. As you can see, uh, the peanut butter and butter have now fully melted and it's just a nice smooth consistency. So now all there really is to do is just add the two other ingredients and that's powdered sugar and this is one pound. It's a lot of sugar I know but you need it for this and it does make quite a few. So uh, about uh, a pound is 454 grams to be exact. <laughs> uh, so I would just recommend um, just weighing it because if you put it in cups it makes a mess. And, and then we've got three cups of rice cereal and if you're curious um, I believe one cup is 28 grams which is about 85 grams for three cups. And all you need to do is mix to combine. Um, I wouldn't recommend using a hand blender or putting this in a stand mixer. So basically you're just going to mix this until it's all fully incorporated. And this does take a little bit of time. And you will see it's quite a big um, batter. And you know, if you want, you can easily, um, if this is too much, you can easily divide this, uh, do whatever. 
um, depending on the amount you need. So I'm just going to finish incorporating this all through and um, I'll show you the next step. So I've now fully incorporated the mixture as you can see and um, now simply these need to be chilled. Before we eat, can even uh, melt the chocolate and everything, these need to chill and in the, in the freezer for probably about an hour or two at the minimum. So the shape and everything is up to you. Um, I would say you could try doing different ones, like uh, you could do, like I'll do a few examples. Um, you could do, oh, it's a little big. You want to make them kind of small because this is a pretty rich dessert. Um, so there's an example, just rolling it like that. Or, um, as I mentioned, you could do an egg shape, and that's simply uh, like... Sorry about that. Like so. So that would be a big example. But you can really be creative and do um, what you wish. Um, you could even, I, I mean, I haven't tried this, but you could try using a cookie cutter if you wanted specific shapes. Um, that would kind of look impressive. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll play around and do a few examples. And basically, basically this is the part that's up to you. It's really... Um, you can uh, make this to your liking if you, with, with the different shapes that you can do. Um, so I'm going to just roll all of these out and I'll show you what that looks like. So I've rolled everything out and I did it in different shapes. Here I've got kind of more of an egg shape and then a rabbit. But for most of them I just rolled them into balls because it's just easier. Um, the amount will vary depending on the size that you roll them into, what you roll it into. Um, so now you just need to let these set, um, I would recommend in the freezer for one or two hours, and um, then you can take it out, and I will show you the next step then. Uh, just a side note again on the peanut butter, which is very important. Um, as I mentioned, I just want to stress again, um, the peanut butter that you use is a very important. Using raw or natural peanut butter is not a good idea when baking because um, the oils in raw peanut butters have a tendency to separate. Um, the gross, the store-bought one is um, got a stabilizer in it, and that uh, can that that is what keeps the peanut butter together. And so you don't want it to fall apart um, as it's chilling or as you're um, dipping it in the chocolate. So I'm going to put this in the freezer. I've got them all laid out here. I got a few. Uh, round balls and then I've got I had a bunny rabbit cut cookie cutout and I tried doing it and I, I did have a struggle because it's a very tough dough anyway and I did some egg shaped and um, yeah so these are good these are good just on their own they're very good they're already very sweet because obviously of the, because of the confection of sugar that was added but I mean what's a peanut what's a peanut butter candy without chocolate I don't know um, so I've got right here uh, three different types of chocolate that I've melted. So I've got a milk chocolate here, and I've got a dark chocolate. This is a 70% 70, 70 cocoa, um, and this. Now, this I'm going to explain to you. I ran out of white chocolate, and normally I go to a special chocolate store to get my chocolate, but they were closed and I was in a hurry, so I had to get store-bought. But it... As I mentioned, with white chocolate, you want to get a high quality because if you don't, it's waxy, it's gross. Anyway, I melted it and it turned very thick and very wax, waxy. I had to thin it out with milk and it got way too thin, so I had to add some confectioner sugar. So I'm not going to do many with this. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this, but um, I'm primarily going to be using the milk chocolate and the dark chocolate. And the milk chocolate and dark chocolate, in case you're wondering what I'm using, um, I've shown you this before, this brand, Keiko Berry. That's what I'm using for my dark chocolate. I'm going to be doing most of mine with this chocolate. And right here I've got, um, these are Calibo Calots. Uh, you can look up the company Calibo. Uh, they're a very well-known chocolate company. 
So what all I did was I used different amounts, and you can determine what kind of chocolate you want. I mean, it's your creation, so it's up to you. Um, for this one, I did, um, well, originally I put in half a pound, 227 grams of white chocolate. But I'm going to be probably needing more chocolate because I don't think I'm going to do many of the peanut butter balls in this. Um, I weighed out, I did 150 grams of milk chocolate and about uh, 250 grams of dark chocolate. But just keep in mind, depending on the thickness of the coating you put on, um, it really, it, it's really hard to say how much you'll need. You'll definitely need at least a pound of chocolate. Absolutely, you will definitely need at least a pound of chocolate to, to um, cover all of these um, at the bare minimum. I would start off with a pound, maybe a pound and a quarter, so between 450 and 600 grams of chocolate, and go from there. If you need more, you can easily melt more, but that's a good starting line. I would recommend a dark and milk chocolate. I just brought the white chocolate in the mix so you could see all three of the chocolates and what it would look like. I've got a separate cookie sheet here, and I'm actually just going to move this to the side, uh, because Let's be honest, if we're using different kinds of chocolate, we're not going to be able to, without making a mess, get these all back on here because they're all very tightly put together. So um, I melted this chocolate. Uh, I, I melted uh, the dark chocolate in the microwave. I did the milk chocolate over the stove with a double boiler. Um, and for each of the chocolates, I added about half a tablespoon of butter. And the reason I add the butter is it adds a shine to it. I don't like to add wax or, or any type of chemical thing to make it look that, that sometimes people do in, in uh, candy making to make, it, make your product look shiny. I would much rather use uh, butter. And you can see it's still very shiny. It's very nice. So I'm going to do a few to start. And it's very simple and easy to do. I'm just going to grab two spoons here. So you take a ball like this and you simply put it in the chocolate and again these the balls obviously they need time to cool, they need to set, otherwise this isn't going to work. So you just want to wrap them quickly, take them out, wipe off any excess and drop them on your cookie sheet just like that. And you're going to do this for each one of them. Um, it does take a little bit of time. And a little bit of patience, but you wrap it off and you, you can decide the amount. It's completely up to you. I like to get the excess off. Um, this, this, I'm telling you, this is just an amazing, amazing dessert. Um, I'll do an egg for you right now. Whoops. <laughs> this is a biggie. <laughs> And I can tell you, it just, it smells amazing in here. The, the peanuts flavor is really even more than the chocolate. And you can see, I don't know if the camera picks this up, but you can see it's already starting to set, which is very good. That's what we want. So now for, I'll try a few examples with the dark chocolate. You can see how nice and appealing um, the, the chocolates look right now, um, or the, the peanut peanuts look right now. So I'm going to do a few examples of the dark chocolate. And this dark chocolate is my favorite. I absolutely love this brand. The chocolate, is, it's so beautiful. I, and I know that sounds kind of funny to say, but if, if you see from here, it's got a nice shine and that's not just from the butter. This is a high quality chocolate. And as I mentioned to you, if you're going to be doing any type of serious chocolate recipe like this or um, uh, like a tort or things that have very few ingredients where chocolate can play as a dominant flavor, you really need to use a good quality chocolate. Um, this is a, this is an expensive chocolate. It's uh, the place I got it, I get it at, um, it is pretty expensive. It's about $20 for a kilogram. Uh, but let me tell you, I do not at all regret spending that money because um, it, I'm, I know that it's going to taste way better than I would ever get with a store-bought one. 
So <clears throat> these are a few of the dark chocolate. And now I'll try out the white chocolate. And we'll see how this plays out. <laughs> Ooh, keep your fingers crossed. I don't know how well this is going to work. So I'm going to get another spoon. I should have had these at the ready, but I was not prepared. What am I going to do? Um, and one of the reasons why I prefer the regular chocolate over peanut butter, uh, over the, sorry, over the white chocolate, is because, okay, I've wrapped it, okay, I've put it on, you can still see the peanut um, ball in the center. I like the dark chocolate disguising the peanut butter to kind of act as a surprise for whoever has it. The other thing, too, is I find um, with this recipe in particular, it's so sweet as it is, and chocolate is sweet enough as it is, but I find sometimes white chocolate can be too sweet. And that's why I'm only going to do a few of these. And I, I just sometimes find that's the case. Anyway, and don't worry about any excess. Um, you can break it off like once, it, once you put it in the freezer. Once you finish dipping all of them, and it does take some time, I do warn you, this is... That, this part's the most time-consuming part. As you can see, I primarily focused on the dark and milk chocolate, and it just looks fantastic. You can see some of them have already set. Um, like, I can touch one of them, and I'm barely getting any chocolate on my finger. Uh, but these should still go in the fr freezer for about an hour at least, just to set. And then you can serve them right away. Now, before I do, just as an option to give you, you can put sprinkles on. Now's the time to do it, actually, right in, right after you dip your peanut butter candy in chocolate. If you want to add candies or something, that's the time to do it. Or what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to see if this works, um, I used the white chocolate. I added a bit of powdered sugar uh, to make kind of a white chocolate icing. And I'm just going to try this out for a few. I, I took a Ziploc bag. I put some of the icing in the Ziploc bag and snipped off the end. Whoa, it's falling out. Okay, so now I'm just going to try just drizzling. And you can do specific designs. It's really up to you. Like, I'll just try to do... Just like that. Just a few nice lines. And this is completely optional. I mean, I'm only doing this to make use of this white chocolate that I had. Like, you can, you can do what you want. And uh, you can leave it as is, put sprinkles, add a little design. I might try one more. Do, do. There we go. I don't know. That just gives you an idea. So then, you, as I mentioned, you just put it in the freezer, and then you can serve it right away whenever, uh, whenever you like. They store well in the freezer. They're great, um, but they should be kept refrigerated. Um, because as soon as you eat them, as soon as they're in your hand, the chocolate will start to melt. So, these are a very delicious treat. I would highly recommend you give it a try. Um, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.